Here I am, quilling again. My husband is screaming at the dog. So I'm in my new little workbench area and I'm gonna work on this um, S monogram tonight. I figured I would go live again because it's really no sense not to. It's kind of fun and I think I've talked before about how I feel as though it's kind of like gives me an archive of my work and I don't think a whole lot of people do live quilling because it's kind of like watching paint dry and um but for those of you who are interested I suppose it, it, it is interesting on occasion to see the process and um you know just get, kind of introduce you to the painstakingly slow process of quilling I'm just kind of try to bring, I have this project light, so I'm going to try to bring over here to brighten up the area. I don't know if that helped or not. I noticed that whenever I try to make the area brighter in here, what actually ends up happening is that it seems like it, it dims the camera down, I, and I don't know why it does that. It's really weird. All right, so anyways, um, this is an 8x8, eight eight, and when you first think of 8x8s, eight I think that people are like, oh, that's really small. But in reality, 8x8 eight eight monograms are really big. That's a lot of area to fill with little strips of paper. The request for this was to do um, uh, shades of gray, shades of yellow, and white. And this is a commission piece. And it's just for my standard monogram. I kind of got this a little bit dirty. My camera dropped on it a few minutes ago, but it should be fine because I'm going to cover it with um, with quilling scrolls and stuff. So this is a Cricut paper. This is the really uh, heavy duty 300 GSM uh, white cardstock background that I like to use. And whenever I try, whenever I cut uh, my letters out of Cricut, out of the Cricuts. I always do extras, so like I have a whoopsie. <laughs> I was gonna do some test monograms um, in a in the six by this is a six by six size. Oh god, Yikes. So this will be like a six by six size, and then I even have a little three and a half by three and a half, which actually which is actually the four inch, the four inch size. So I have this one. So I cut these just to have on hand. I, I hate wasting paper, and then with the excess paper. I always try to go ahead and cut some of the strips so I can do the outlining um, to match the background. I don't always do that. I've just been trying to do it lately because I've, I've noticed that a lot of times I'm like, oh, well, oh, this cat has quilling radar. Every time I'm in this room, she's like, oh, I'm going to go visit my mommy and I'm going to leave hair everywhere and I'm going to get the dog riled up. Oh, hello. Hello, Wayne Wayne. It's my cat, and her name is Dame. I have no I don't remember how old she is. She must be seven, eight years old, something like that. Maybe maybe older. I don't know. She's, a, she's fluffy, and she's obnoxious. She's obnoxious. Not really a cat person. I always have had a cat, but when it comes to that emotional bond with a, with, a, with another creature it's always been dogs for me all right so this is this is just the loveliest sunny yellow color and of course the lighting in here is absolutely terrible so you can't see but this is it basically is the color of an egg yolk an anemic egg yolk not the kind of egg yolk that you'd get around here if you had your own chickens it's a little less than a natural egg yolk I have got three shades of gray from Quilled Creations, and it's all in a 3 8 inch paper. Uh, light gray, regular gray, and dark gray. The dark gray and the regular gray are almost indistinguishable. They're, this is one of my pet peeves about quilling paper. Um, they're selling this as different colors, but the problem is that this one you're not going to be able to tell the difference between the two. In their regular quilling paper, the dark gray is very different than the medium gray. It's much, much darker. In the 3 8 it doesn't seem to be so much, unless they've changed their grays around. I don't know. I've got white 
from Juya on Amazon. Um, I'm going to say that it's not the most crisp, brilliant white, but it will definitely do. I want to use it up, so I'm not going to go off and I'm not going to go out and use the um, Quilt Creations white because I, I hate leaving loose packs like this. And then I've got four shades of yellow from Quilt Creations. I've got pale yellow, deep yellow, yellow yellow, and golden. I don't think I'm going to use golden because it's a little on this. This is real egg yolky looking. By comparison, if you I don't know if you can see the difference here, um, it might be a little bit too dark for this one. I don't know. I may add it later as just a test. Who knows? But definitely going to use these three because these are true yellows. It's always good to have a, a variety of shades. I've also got some. This is a Julia. It's very similar to the pale yellow, but it's a little bit warmer, a little bit more orange in that. It's still very light, and I think I want to get this used up, so I'm going to try to incorporate that into it. And then this is another one of the Julia colors, which is almost identical to, uh, well, it's just a little bit lighter, actually, than the deep yellow. So it's it's a golden yellow, but it's lighter than the deep yellow. So definitely a nice shade. And then I've got two shades of the Julia gray. A light gray and then a darker gray and I may thread these in because like I said I want to use them up all right so I'm probably not going to comment and talk and stuff while I'm quilling tonight I'm just going to go ahead and go for it. I was going to show you another this is another S that I cut out um, I wanted to try this it's very large see how it comes right up to the edge of the paper here I always like to leave all this blue is white space that goes around the outside edge of the monogram there's nothing I hate more than seeing artwork that's like squished right up against the, the bitter edge of the mat because it doesn't give that artwork in my opinion room to breathe so I always try to keep an inch three quarters of an inch some, at the very least a half an inch just to give a visual buffer there of some white space this, I'll still have white space on top and bottom because I always tape my stuff off with this thin painter's tape, which, by the way, I don't like because it I've been screwed by it. It actually has grabbed my background paper and um, ruined it. So this right here is a real big S, and I'm not sure if I really want... Oh, look, I got... See, I don't know where all this dirt is coming from. Um... I'm not really sure if I want to do this or not. I may do it just as a test. Who knows? I've got four over here. So it seems like an all a lot of extra work just to make demo pieces, but but sometimes I do that. Don't forget that I'm offering uh, some demo monograms for 50% off. Um, I was going to do a three and a half inch or a four inch monogram, just, but I just decided not to. So if anyone is interested in a six by six monogram, which would be this size here, um, I'm going to do 50% off the first 10 people. I've already got two reserved, and, and I'll do that for um, the end, you know, kind of like March, April. I'm not going to, like, do it this very moment because I've got a lot of projects going right now. All right, so what do we got here? I got my glue bottle capped off with the pin, which is a very bad idea because they tend to rust. The only thing I don't have in here is my... Um, is my dry my blush brush to keep my surface clean but ugh. yeah it's not in there oh well I'm gonna go ahead and keep playing around so this lady wants grays yellows and white so I'm gonna go ahead and just do like a you know like a three step six piece scroll to start with, I'm just going to kind of just feel out where to place it. I never go into these with any true destination of mine. I just kind of start and start placing things. And if they work, they work. If they don't, I remove them and I try something different. That's pretty much my process from start to finish. Oh, I kind of like this one too. Maybe I'll do these. 
I always hold off building the, um, lately anyways, I've been not doing the outline first because I want to, I want the scroll work to break through the outline. Um, so I put the outline after. All right. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and start staggering my, my scroll here. really bright right there isn't it we'll do um I'll do the warm yellows in the center kind of making me wish that I had more kind of like cool yellows I have a lot of the warm yellows I'm just not you know just maybe it's the lighting in here they feel they feel like they feel clashy to me So if I get quiet, I'm just going to be working just like I did when I did my my heart. I um I am going to do some more hearts, I think. But I that mom that mom monogram is so beautiful. Oh my god, I just can't get over how pretty that um that paper is. Oh, and it's just a, it's a nice quality paper too. I'm just surprised that I have never ever once. Um, opened it up and touched it. Now I know. So it's like every time I go to Cricut.com now to go shopping, I'm like, oh my god, I gotta get myself some designer paper. And then I'll end up with four or five boxes. Right now I just have three boxes of it. I have so much paper. My video equipment will show up tomorrow. I'm very excited. I like to spin out my tight coil and then hold it to give the paper kind of a chance to um, compress itself so it holds the curl better. I'm just going to hold this. But I'll have my videography equipment tomorrow. I'm so happy. And I'll have It'll have a little light so hopefully we won't have the shadowing. The odd thing is is that and for my eyes this is very, very bright. I, it's very brightly lit. I can't, I don't understand why everything looks so dim in here. I think it's my cell phone. I, I don't know. It's the weirdest thing. But I don't know how to fix it, so. Whatever. I'm going to go ahead and release this. And I have this beaut. I love the, the way it, they first spring out. I'm kind of going to let it open up a little bit. I'm only going to make it about that big. I'm going to pull all of the um, the individual strips here just to kind of open the coil up. I have got to fix that fingernail. Oh, wow, it is hideous. This is um, the downfall of being a pandemic recluse, you don't cut your fingernails. And apparently, I'm not chewing them off fast enough. Like, normally I eat my fingernails. <laughs> no. Um, normally I will, I guess, chew them off, I guess, or they'll peel off or something. But this one thumbnail seems to be clinging to existence, unfortunately for me. It's all ragged. Both my thumbs are ragged. As you can see, getting the coils just perfectly is a time-consuming process, but the end result is that everything is neatly um, spaced. So what I'm going to do is just kind of figure out how I want to start the scroll on this S. It's like, well, how do I want to, you know, do I want to start at the tail? I'm going to flip it over and kind of start at the nose. You know, is this what we want to do? I'm not sure. If I do this, can I, can I bring this around here? Or should I come in a little bit? I'd like to use the entire tail. Hmm. 
And this is the fun process here where you actually can go in and say, oh, I'm going to do all these cool things. Now, if I put it right there, it kind of comes right to the edge of that serif. And these are the serifs. If you've ever seen um, fonts that say sans serif, means without serif, which would be a font like this, where there's no little decorative hooks at the end. This is a serif font. But if I put this right here, then what I can do is kind of bring it right up into that right there. And I can run this all the way around. That's, I think, what I'm going to do. So to make it stay nice, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and glue the center of this scroll and then I'm going to work my way down here. But I want this to stick first, otherwise it's going to be difficult to kind of um, keep it controlled as I work down through. I've actually really been liking that look of taking the entire tail end of my first large scroll and working it into the body of the of the uh, the monogram. I had my little heater going in this room all day because last night I tried to come in here to do this and it was so cold I could not stand it. Um, but today the heater was going and the problem was that right now I am cooking. All right, so tweezers are really helpful to get control of the paper. So what I'm gonna do is I just want this, I want the center of this to kind of follow the curve of this serif. And I want it to cover the top of that outer serif, the outer thing. I know it seems really fussy of how I'm placing this, but I'm going to hold that down right there because that's the part that I need secured so that I can kind of work the rest of this up and around. And like I said, I know that it's odd that I'm so fussy with the placement, but I think that artistically speaking, hitting certain, doing extra things like that, I think really make the piece. Oops, you know what I'm missing? Honey, yeah. can you bring me in my paintbrush and my my brush wash, please? I'm sorry. I forgot my brush wash. And, oh, there's my coon hat. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. I need my brush wash. The paint brushes with my brush, with the brush wash. So, anyways, this will allow me to follow. Everybody needs multiple cutting hands. Everybody needs to set it right here, dear. Thank Everybody you. Hearing aids? What? <laughs> you know, if anybody had said to me in 2018 when I was um, depressed and dying inside over the loss of my beautiful Dookie, um, and I heart went heartbroken to a local breeder and snatched myself up a coon puppy. <laughs> If anybody had said, are you sure that that's what you want to do? I would have been like, of course, of course, it's what I want to do. So what I'm doing here is I have some sort of fuzz that I don't know where it's come from. I just have like little fuzzies that are showing up here. And I don't know whether it's because I wiped this brush across my, my jeans. I'm just trying to pull it up is all I'm doing. The paintbrushes are really good for that. Kind of irritates me because I don't understand that. 
where this came from because this is a clean brush wash. It's little things like that that really get me. So anyways, um, if anyone had, you know, taken a few minutes to talk me out of the Coonhound, I think at the time I would have listened to Reason, although now that I've, you know, that he's part of my life, I'm like, oh, I'm addicted to the Coonhounds, but boy, oh boy, what a horrendous amount of work these dogs are. I mean, like, whew exhausting I don't think I slept the whole entire first year and then he came with health problems um, his breeders didn't treat him for hookworm and I guess they had a really horrible hookworm infestation at their kennel and then the vet didn't bother to treat him after I brought him in for hookworm because um, of course they wouldn't have they didn't seem to un realize that there was that they needed to address a potential hookworm problem. So then he ended up with IBS. Um, I guess that these fuzzies are just never going to go away. They're just going to keep appearing. I don't understand it. Um, so he was, he had a lot of health issues for the first year of his life, and now he's got lingering health issues. Not like, he's not a sickly dog by any means. He has a lot of energy. Which is really good in the summertime, because he's fun to go hiking with. And I hike him every single day. I only think I miss like five or six days from April of this year, last 2020, until hunting season started. But in the wintertime, he's inconsolable because he has so much energy. And that's hard because I don't really like to go out in the winter because it's really quite cold and crappy. I've been taking him out as much as possible. Um, but it just doesn't have the same charm to me that summer hiking does. It's a fuzz. I just don't understand this. Where did this fuzz come from? Well, all right, well, not, not much I can do about that. It's going to be easier if I kind of move my entire work board now. So I'm just going to pivot. I think that the um, the fuzz is going to plague me. Like, I'm not going to be able to deal with with this fuzz thing until it's completely hidden. I don't know if you can hear the cat snoring. She's found a beautiful spot in a in a location that I do not want her in at all, and she's snoring her, her little fool self away this right here for me is the most time consuming aspect of quilling if I didn't feel as though precise neat gluing was just one of the most important things to this I probably could get things done quite a bit quicker, but because I have to paint all the glue on, <laughs> piece by piece, yeah, very time consuming. I'm going to go ahead and shift, oh, shift it back around here. I have to ask myself, what is the, you know, where am I going to go with this? Am I just going to keep bringing it down? I think what I'm going to do is probably cut across. Well, I might actually just bring it right, right up to here and then just fade it, fade it around the corner. I think that's what I'm probably going to do. I assume that there isn't a whole lot of live quilling videos on the internet because of this. 
um, the fact that it's very slow, it doesn't build up. Um, it's kind of meticulous work. I guess another word for it would be tedious. But if you're like me, it's one of those things that is just really, really fun. I truly enjoy it. Um, I like micromanaging the paper. And for some reason, I don't know why, but this is one of the few mediums that I just really feel like I have a lot of control over. When it's when you're talking about like watercolors or acrylic or charcoal and all that, it's not well charcoal. I do have quite a bit of control of the charcoal too, but um, you know, it's just it's nice to have a medium where you can make the result that you had in your head. Um, and I feel as though most of the time, once I've started a design. I can achieve what my brain is saying it should maybe not look like, but feel like. I guess that's a weird way of putting it, but I sometimes I go with a feeling as opposed to an actual design. It's like, how does the end result make me feel? And um, I guess that's how I judge it. Like, does do I is there a, a place on it where I'm like, oh, like it feels discordant to me or something? And, but, a lot of mediums don't, you know, I don't have that real high control over. Alcohol inks. <laughs> we have a love-hate relationship. I absolutely want to dominate that art form, but I just, it doesn't agree. It doesn't like me. It's like whatever, I'm going to do what I want. It's like the Cartman of arts. I'm painting the, the, the tips of this because I want it to kind of tack together so that the, the pieces aren't separating. And I'm not do, putting any huge amount of glue on it because I don't want the paper to buckle. Um, I'm just, just touching it on just enough to give some some uh, tackiness to the edges and you will never notice you know you won't know it when it's done I have done this on several of my pieces lately and it seems to work nicely now I don't know if you can see this right now but this one right here I have kind of a like a the staggered tail end of um, of my strips there's six of them and what I want to do is I want to make sure that the strips are kind of being held against the white space here, or the, the white, the background. So I'm going to paint on this side. Elmer's glue fades almost 100% into white background if you do it gently. And then I'm going to go ahead and snip these ends and then I'm going to glue them all to each other. But I'm going to just stagger them very softly. I'm just cutting the ends so that they're all within, I'm going to say two millimeters of each other. And then it leaves this multicolored end, I'm not sure you can see that or not, right here. It's got the light, the pale yellow, the golden yellow, and the regularly yellow. So I'm, I'm going to make sure when I, when I do more work on this side of the of the monogram that I cap that off so that you don't see that stagger. I do a lot of capping um, just because it looks better and it makes it look more neat and polished. There. Now I'm just going to kind of use my finger and kind of just do that and then I'm going to just hold it up against that and I'm going to glue this corn this little end piece here I actually don't want to touch it because I'm afraid it's gonna leave a glue booger so I want to use my tweezers there because they're a nice surface that isn't going to 
my skin might leave, you know, little glue boogers on it, and I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to kind of hold that there like that until it, until it sits or until it sets there. And sometimes I'll just leave the uh, the tweezers there because that'll hold it in place. And that's all I really want. I just want it to hold while the glue sets. Now, in the meanwhile, I am going to go frig with that weird end that has the um, the uh, little lint pieces. And I, oh, look, there we go. There we go. All I had to do was just get a little bit of, a little bit more water on my brush to get that going. So anyways, this right here is another reason why I don't know if quilling is really, I think people get into quilling and it's not like crochet where you can just like have instant results. You know, you see the product building. There's just so many little details and it's so time consuming that I don't think it's, it's the right art form for everyone. And I think that when you see people really producing gorgeous quilled artwork, you just have to, I like, whoa, the first thing I think of when I see these things is like, that must have taken a, you know, a month of Sundays. Um, so I am fully in awe and full of appreciation for those master quillers out there who come up with these masterpieces because I know how much work it took. I've done it. That lion took me, and if you see what I'm doing here, I'm just kind of cleaning this little thing there. That will dry. It won't actually stay like that. It'll. It's just dark because it's a little damp. But I think it's going to fix that problem that I've got. And I have another piece of lint over here. I just, this lint just making me mad. I found that there is really very little that you can do, that you can't do with one of these little paint brushes. Um, you can apply glue extremely exactly. You can remove glue. You can edit your work with it because you can actually go through and paint water onto areas that will then, that you would, that you want the glue to release. I don't know if you've seen the video or not, but I tore that line apart at least four or five times. I don't mean just pulled a couple of quills out. I mean, I'm talking built, rebuilt the whole head um, several times because I wasn't happy with the way the ears were. And then I wasn't happy with the way the bangs were. Yeah, see, this little piece of fuzz right here is just going to be... Ugh, I'm not going to be able to cope with it. We're going to put another beautiful scroll right there. Okay, so we got this scroll here from the S. This right here should be dry. Oh, look at that, see? It's got a little itty bitty glue bugger. And all I'm gonna do is just dampen my brush and I'm just gonna paint it and voila, voila. That little glue bugger is gone and I have a nice straight glued edge. Okay, so the interior color here is that pale yellow. So if I want to cap this, I would just take a piece of the pale yellow like that. And all I would do is just kind of curve, pre-curve it. And I would put it right here against where those stagger tails go. I would obviously cut it to where it's supposed to be cut. Um, and that's going to cap that end. I'm not sure. I'm going to, I'll see if I can swing it around here. Okay. So there's different, there's a color gradient there that I would like to, 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 dis, to disguise and I would just cap it with the other color so it's going to blend into the other part of the S. I'm not going to do that right now because I might build off that with another scroll so it's not going to necessarily be important to do that. But at the very end, if I go over this visually and I'm like, oh, that's a weird kind of gradient of strips there, let's go ahead and... Cap it. I would do it at the end. I do it a lot of times with my scroll work cats around the 
the tail and the, the, the bottom rear section. All right, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and build, I'm going to do grays next. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to do a light, medium, dark because I'm just kind of keeping it consistent. Although the dark gray includes the quality creations. So one thing I was going to tell you is, do you notice that I just tore the package off and I left the, the, the thing like this? All right, so here's the deal. I have to be a good girl. I have to be good. I can't do this to myself anymore. So this is the light gray. What I'm going to do here is um, take another piece and I'm going to swatch this. There is nothing worse than not knowing what color paper you're using or losing a pack and or leaving a pack out and then not having a label. So this is my goal for this year is to make sure that all of my colors are swatched. So right there. Now I know this is light gray. So if I have a, a pack without a label in it, all I got to do is come and compare the paper. I'm like, oh, look, that's light gray. This must be Quilled Creations. So then I know that I either have to order that in because I'm, I'm low on it, or I know that I can use this to build on a project without it creating a difference in color. Then I'm just going to kind of slide this down inside the package. There. Good girl. Good girl, Stacey. All right, let's go ahead and grab two of the regular gray because we're going to do a six strand scroll again. And I'm going to swatch this one too because grays are not fun to try to distinguish. I only wish that my camera was showing how nice and bright it was in here. <laughs> this room is just so beautiful and bright now and clean um but the camera it just looks so dark i can't figure out how to go live with my cam either because that one's obviously got the, the best video there now that is swatched swatched and swatched and i'm gonna go the dark gray is not swatched because this was part of a cat binge that i did a week or so ago and you can see it's just, you can't even tell the difference, just this hint of difference in, in the two colors. But whatever. I've been there. I did my own paper for a year, and I understand how you buy paper and you don't really know exactly what it looks like until you get it. But then you got to sell it. And if it's slightly different, you can't sell it as the same color, because God knows, someone will be like, but this isn't the same color. It's a little different. All right, I'm going to do the light gray on the outside, and I'm just going to do light, medium, dark, outer to inner. And then the next set of scrolls that I do, I'm probably going to do blended yellow and gray so that I don't, so that they, there's um, not this stark contrast between the scroll work. I want it to kind of move together and blend. Alrighty. I think that quilling would be interesting to try to do classes via Zoom or something. Every time I've offered local quilling classes, they've ended kind of in disaster. Like, um, the most recent one, literally they declared the pandemic just before the classes were and the, and the store that I was going to do them in um, basically shut down during the first, uh, what's it called? Health advisory or the first state of emergency. So I, I didn't get to do that quilling class. And I had lots of people have emailed me and messaged me over the years saying, please, please, please. But it just never seems to work out. All right, so there's my graduated strips, and they're all glued together. I know that I have, if you've seen my scroll work videos on YouTube, I have a glueless method as well. I've just been liking this glued method for some reason. Maybe it's just because I'm feeling old and meticulous lately. And I want to, maybe it's just because I'm just kind of, you know, changed my quilling style. 
All right, let's go ahead and spin up this beautiful gray. I'm gonna hold it so that it kind of helps hold its shape better. And I think I'm gonna come up from this serif and then go along the top here. I still have that fuzz right there that I'm gonna to have to do something with because it just didn't wanna come off. I just can't even imagine that. Murphy's Law. I'm just pull my quilling tool. This, by the way, is the Julia um, quilling tool. I got it off Amazon. It's like a four pack of them for $12 and something, but this one does the 3 8 inch paper, which is the really deep paper, and the, the uh, 10 millimeter paper. And it's got a fairly fine head on it, too, so I really like them. Um, I just don't like the fact that I can't just buy this one tool. i got to buy the whole four pack, because then I have all kinds of extra stuff. It's the problem that I'm finding with the Julia is they rope you into additional purchases that you're just not necessarily, you know, anticipating. See now to me, I think it would look really cool to come to come like this and to, to come up the front. I like that effect quite a bit actually. Yeah, I think I, I think I'm gonna go with that. Or well let's just 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 do one more test here. Let me see what happens if I come up along. What does this look like? Yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't really. No, I definitely like that look better. I'm going to come down like this, swoop it around, and then follow that up through and kind of give it this a nice chunky, chunky, chunky um, forward layer. Yep. All right, let's go ahead and get this separated. So okay, again, we have this obsessive compulsive thing that I do where I actually go in and separate all the little the little paper sections because I like them to be evenly placed. Oh, the kitty cat woke up. Let's hope the coon hound did not hear the cat wake up because any sign of this cat's existence drives that dog into orbit. You thought think he's loud when he's just just being a coon hound. Oof. Wait until you hear him when he goes after the kitty cat. And it's not really play either. Alright, so I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's nice and evenly spaced. And I'm gonna put it so that it's Right like that. I'm going to bring it to the edge of that serif right here. And then I'm going to bring the head right up to about there. I'm going to glue this first and then I'm going to work on the tail. So what I'm going to do is just, I think I might want to tighten the head up a little bit. So I'm going to just go ahead and push these back and I don't want to open up quite as much as it is. I don't usually do that. I should work from the outside in actually to do this, to tighten it. Push that, push that. And this one just needs to be altered slightly. Yeah, that's not bad, good enough. Okay, so I decided that I'm going to do it like this. So what I'm going to do is glue it on the bottom here first. Hey, Wamey. What's up? Okay, so I'm going to get the head really good. I'm going to tap it down so it's not glomped everywhere. And I'm going to start the neck right here so that it holds this kind of tight pinched effect. If I were to just let this kind of these ends move around, it would change the distribution of those coils. And I like to keep it 
in this particular shape, so gluing it here helps with that. And I'm just going to kind of tap that down, and I'm going to tap it on the back on the um, on my workboard just to get the excess off, so it's not like so I don't have all kinds of gross glue dots everywhere. There we go. Okay. And um, in the background, I'm wiping off my finger because I got glue on my finger. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and place this. Like I said, I want the edge to cover the end of that serif. And then I want the head to kind of get up on top of that. But I do want it at a better angle here. So I'm going to kind of bring it around. Whoops. Perfect. And now I'm going to hold it. I'm holding it and I'm telling it you're going to stay right here. Okay. And then what I'm also going to do later on is I'm going to take a paintbrush I'm going to go and I'm going to paint the outer coil and the inner one to make sure that everything is nice and solid. I don't want these popping up in transit. I'm not saying that, that you know, things like that can't happen, but I try to anticipate pitfalls like that and address them beforehand. <laughs> I think my biggest fear is sending something to someone and then having them complain and be like, well, I got it and there was something wrong with that. And Because and I hate that. I don't want anything bad to happen to these things. Cause I take so, I, they're just so time consuming. Trust me, I don't want my stuff getting broken in transit either. There we go. See how this is moving? I'm going to fix that later. I assume that you can see that. I don't know if you can see it or not. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to kind of come down here and I'm going to glue the front and back side to the monogram template and the and the background so that I um so that it doesn't move. And then I may do the brush thing where I brush the tops just to kind of keep them together. And if there's fuzz on this, I'm going to buy new paintbrushes. I actually have new paintbrushes in the other room, but I was using them for alcohol inks, so I had not gotten very far. I'm just going to start working this this way so that it's bending the correct direction. Alrighty. I'm going to go ahead and glue along here. One thing that I love the paint brushes for is that I can precisely put the glue on. It brushes it out so it dries faster and I also let the tip of the paintbrush here. Sometimes when you're doing these monograms you're not butted up against things so I just kind of take it and I kind of push this way to kind of make sure there's a seal between this piece and this piece. I just do that quite often actually. Now I have to kind of gauge where I'm going to start exiting this, the inside of the S and kind of moving towards the outside. And I think that this right here works the best. This kind of gives it a nice gradual switch. I'll probably have to go glue those later on, but I'm going to leave them like that for now. I don't really mind that look. Just a really thin bead of glue and then I just kind of wipe it because it helps it dry. It also helps it stay transparent. You know, it helps it so that the glue isn't building up and sometimes I'll just kind of hold it down like this just to give it some additional pressure. Because of the angle the paper is facing, it's bowing towards me, I can glue on this side and it's not I don't have to worry about it popping on the other side because of the way it's bent. Um, so I can just kind of keep coming around here. All right, so remember how I told you that I might have had to cap these ends? Well, guess what? I'm not going to have to do that, but I am going to glue them together. I'm going to glue them up against this. I could wait until the end to do this. Like I don't have to do it right now, but I, I want to just give it a little tiny bit of glue just so that I have something to hold this really thick tail section together with. So there we go. 
And I'm just going to go ahead and paint along the top because I, I saw a little tiny bit of glue pop up. Oopsie. All right, so then I'm going to, this, this tail end here, I want to keep pressure against, against this inner piece so that the ends don't kind of pop up or the, the, t the top parts don't pop up. I'm, I'm going to glue directly onto the background here. And as long as it's a white, flat background, your Elmer's glue should blend in incredibly well. I notice sometimes the Cricut, the colored papers, the Cricut, it, it will sometimes leave glue marks. That's kind of a pain. All right. So now what's going to happen is that I'm coming up into, and I, and I got to determine where I want to end these. Do I want to end them up here? Do I want to just keep them going up into the neck? And I think the best thing to do is to end them before the neck and to blend them out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to blend them by just snipping. I'm going to say that I would like this to kind of come up to about here at the most. So I'm going to go ahead and just graduate them by snipping the ends like that. I'm going to go ahead and snip this one about an, a millimeter or two longer. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make each of them longer and longer. There we go. All right, so now these all should graduate right up into the, the curve of the neck right there. And they should blend out and not be really bulky. There, perfect. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I don't, I'm not going to glue the paper to the paper because that will tend to cause waffling and wavering. I'm going to just glue the outside of this for now anyways. Just like that. I'm going to paint that on. I'm going to paint this on. Okay. And I'm going to use my paintbrush to kind of push it push it up against that so it's tight and then it grabs the glue. Also taking care to kind of put pressure, a little bit of pressure on the top because I don't want any pieces to pop up and be higher than the other ones. Like I don't want the center piece to be higher and then because you, you really can't fix that later on. There we go. All right. It's looking really good. And I'm going to go ahead and just put glue out around here. Like that. I'm also just going to kind of put a little tiny bit of glue on the outer edge of this last piece. I'm going to push, put, put pressure up against it like that. I'm going to paint the top there. Okay. And we're just going to go ahead and I'll just use that to smooth it. There. Now, the S, except for I do, I'm, I'm going to have to go in here later and, and, you know, and glue these tops together, but that's not a big deal at all. That's easy and it would be better to do it at the end. So now I got this nice scroll here at the base and I brought it in one sweeping motion all the way up here to make this really 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 chunky 12 um 12 piece outline like i said these are these are pushing apart right now but when i'm finished with them they'll stay together nicely because i'll meticulously go through and glue all the all the tops together but that's a good starting point for um for this scroll work s i don't know if you really can see it I'm gonna, you know, probably come up and bring some 
like blended scrolls in and I'm going to keep building on this probably tomorrow night. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and put this away and um, go get myself some soda. And I will probably be doing this again in a week or so. So again, if you are interested in, the, in any of the uh, six inch monograms, um, I want to do some test pieces. Just message me and they're 50% off. All you got to do is tell me what color, what letter. I'll make them for you and then once they're done, mind you this is March and April, um, I'll send you a 50% off coupon and a picture of the monogram. Okay? And of course then I'll mail it to you <laughs> once it's uh, once the transaction's through. But anyways, thanks for watching tonight. I'm going to go ahead and I'll probably do some more tomorrow night. You may see it a little different by the time I next, the next time I start, but um It'll be a process, probably about 10 or 15 hours on this one. So have a good night.